We're back to this National Scale Modeler. I'm Lee. Today we're going to do the new show for August slash September 2017. What we've got coming up is ISM updates, U Ultimate Modeling Products updates, GBs and SIG news, uh, Mind Paul's current build updates, uh, free prize draw winners for July and August and also September's prizes as well. We've got a couple of reviews for you. One is the Decal Magic from Scale Motorsport from Paul and I've got a review of the Benchvent A300 SD Extractor Fan. Okay, so Ultimate News first. Uh, first, uh, we've got some sad news on, on Ultimate News, really. We're going to discontinue some of our primers. Um, we've uh, recently started stocking oxide, uh, galb, and olive colours in um, the primer range. Uh, unfortunately, the manufacturer recently changed it. We ordered, we ordered a load of 60 milliliter uh, pots, so we're going to do the small pots in the new colours as well. Um, they turned up a completely different colour to our normal order. Unfortunately, we weren't made aware that the manufacturer were changing the colours. Um, and uh, we thought we'd be keeping the same colours. This hasn't happened, so unfortunately, we're going to be uh, stop stocking the uh, uh, galb and the oxide, uh, mainly because the the colour change now is they're nothing like the colours that we were trying to achieve with the oxide and galb, which were obviously German primer colours and um, you know thing and Russian primer colours and things like that. So you could have as undercoats. Uh, unfortunately, that's not going to work now with the new colours. They're just they're just not right. Uh, so uh, the browns, I mean, the oxides turn to a brown, and the uh, the galb is a, more of a beige than the yellow. So uh, they're not going to work for us, unfortunately. We're going to discontinue those, um, and uh, we have some on the site. Some of the old colours still um, in the 120 milliliters. So if you do want some oxide and galb, I suggest you head on over ASAP and get those while limited stocks last. The 60 milliliter bottles we've got in the oxide galb um, are the uh, new colors. So they're, they're more, one's more of a brownish than a red and the uh, yellow is more of a beige than a, and a, than a yellow. So just to pre-warn you for those, if you do order those 60 milliliter pots of those, again, we've got a certain number of those. Once they're gone, they're gone. We won't be stocking them anymore. We are keeping obviously the uh, black, gray and white. Uh, we're also keeping the gloss black and we're also keeping the olive as well because that, is, that color has remained the same. So that still works for what we wanted to present it as. So uh, it's a bit of a shame really, but there's nothing we can do about it. Um, you know, these are the colors we've, we've uh, had to, to take on board, but unfortunately they don't fit uh, what we wanted them for initially. So we're gonna reduce the range of the primers a little bit, but no no, no sad news, really sad news. I mean, it means the colors that we can, we keep our integrity with the colors that we've got. Uh, we don't have to change it. Um, as I say, the oxide was meant as a red undercoat and uh, the gal was as a yellow undercoat. Um, and uh, they're just the new colors aren't gonna fit with that. So uh, that's that news. Uh, that's the, the worst news we're gonna have, so it can't be bad. Um, we've got, uh, I've added a lot of new items to the shop uh, as well. Stuff like new Suju Burrito files. Uh, now we have the, I think I put the review of the thin file up last week. Uh, it's a fantastic little file. I've had mine for a while now and uh, I have to say I've, it's my favorite uh, file for getting into small places, tiny, teeny, tiny places. The reviews on the channel, so go and have a look. But Suji Burrito have now released uh, several shapes of this file. Um, there's, uh, let me think, uh, I haven't written them down. There is semi oval, square, triangle, round. There's a flat file uh, and obviously the thin file as well. There's six in total. Um, now they're extremely handy. We do them as a mega bundle, so you can buy all six together at a reduced price. I think you get about 10, 10 pounds off, 10% off if you buy them as a bundle. Um, and uh, But we have them all for stock on, on sale on the site as well. So if you fancy a different shaped ones as well, let's then go over and help yourself. Uh, we've got new scribing tape in from um, HIQ. Now this stuff is, it's a lot like the Dymo roll that you usually use to scribe. Um, but it's a lot thinner, um, it's not so thick and it's nowhere near as expensive and you buy them on 30 meter rolls and it'll last for ages and ages and ages. Uh, the Dymo roll is really expensive, I think it's about three or four quid per roll and it doesn't last very long at all and obviously once you've stuck it down once you can't stick it down again either, you can't move it around the model, it tends to come up. So uh, really great little product that we've uh, we've started stocking I think it's a fantastic thing and a, a must for most models benches especially if you do aircraft as well. Um, there's also new minions from Retro Kit to collect. Uh, these are some great little ones here. Uh, I'm just going to read through them because there's quite a few released now. Uh, there's the Kelly's Heroes Banana, um, which is a tank one, obviously. Water from Breaking Bad Season Seven. We've also we've also got water from Season One as well, so it's different suits and everything. Uh, we've got a Stern Banana with a Panzer Fest, which is really good. Pulp Fiction Banana, uh, a Speedo Banana, a Green Banana, which is obviously Shrek. And uh, we've got a, the magic banana, which is uh, a Harry Potter 
copy as well. And I have been told, um, you know, reliably informed that there are more on the way also. We've also got from Retro Kit another new one from them is a 172 snow speeder pilots in relaxed poses. Now, if you've if you've seen the 172 snow peelers, big lump of resin that is, uh, they've got the pilots to go with them now in relaxed poses, so you can put them on a diorama or a small vignette or something like that. Uh, we've also got an interior cockpit for the Halcyon uh, dropship from Aliens as well, which is, uh, I know they don't make the, the model anymore, but there's quite a few out there and they're collectors uh, pieces as well, but now there's an interior cockpit because the bottom is really, really bad in those. And we've also, uh, which is a fantastic thing, is the Steel Beast from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Now this is totally unique, no one's done anything else like this whatsoever. Uh, it is quite expensive, but um, it is a chunk of resin. Uh, there is a review up on uh, the channel as well if you want to go and have a look and see what it looks like. Uh, as with all short run resin kits, it's going to need a little bit of work, but it's a, it's a one-off model, that's for sure, totally unique. So we've got all those up for sale uh, on uh, uh, international, um, sorry, umpretail.com. So head on over, have a look around the whole site and uh, see what you if there's anything there you like, I'm sure there will be. Okay, don't forget we're Ultimate Modern Products, are uh, proud to support and sponsor Models for Heroes. Uh, this is the brainchild of Malcolm Childs. Um, we do keep banging on about it, but we do that because it's a, a, a thoroughly worthwhile project and uh, we're really you know, trying to help Martin get off the ground with this and get some real support. Um, and basically it's a, it's a charity uh, where Martin gathers models and modeling supplies. Obviously we've donated some, lots of other model companies have donated some. Loads of people have donated models and um, Airfix Air Miles as well, which is another great one, uh, which you can get loads of models from and he's, he's doing really, really well. And what Martin does, um, he, Malcolm does, he goes around the country and he meets up with servicemen in the recovery centers for things like PTSD and, and stuff like that. And he sits down and does a modeling session with them for an afternoon or a morning. And and uh, it's had some great results and there's a lot of new people being introduced to ex-servicemen being introduced to modeling uh, through Malcolm's efforts, which is only good for our hobby. It's great for them. Uh, a lot of us, I think, uh, in modeling have got into it because it's a relaxing hobby. Um, and uh, my doctor told me I got into it to get into a hobby that helped me relax a lot. I dealt, dealt a lot with stress because of the businesses I have in that. Um, and uh, that's how I got into modeling in the first place and it really did help me and I think it is a really soothing relaxing hobby and uh, I think it's a great effort that Malcolm's doing and there's some news from uh, Models for Heroes as well um, just read this uh, little statement from Malcolm uh, we're extremely proud to announce that Mark Stonelake ex 29th Commando Regiment ex Invictus Games Athlete is as uh, the new ambassador for Models for Heroes so well done Malcolm and Mark I think it's going to be a great partnership. Uh, Mark is a remarkable icon for recovery and dedication after losing a leg in the Afghanistan conflict and suffering multiple injuries. Mark went on to compete in the Invictus Games and fronted the Royal British Legion's Poppy Appeal. Mark now works in supported housing with veterans and recognises firsthand the need to encourage effective therapeutic activities like scale modelling for ex-servicemen. That is why Mark makes a perfect ambassador for Models for Heroes and, and they are overjoyed to welcome him to the team. So I'd just like to say well done to Malcolm and um, Mark as well. Uh, it seems a great marriage and uh, fingers crossed it can only um, promote the charity more and help um, Malcolm achieve his goals and make the charity a very uh, a recognisable name in, in, in within the uh, ex-service industry and everything, ex-servicemen industry. Um, I think they're going to do well and uh, we give them our full support at all times. We do a lot with them on ISM and UMP as well. So if you've got anything to donate, £10 will help. They'll buy a kit or some tools or some paint or whatever. You've got some kits you want to send, Malcolm, that's great. Airfix, air miles, anything, old paints, brushes, anything you don't use um, at all, then Malcolm is more than happy to accept it. And you get hold of them on uh, their Facebook page, which is flashing up here now, or you can go to their website, modelforheroes.co.uk. Um, so please do help out um, if you want to keep this hobby alive and you can do that and help some ex-servicemen while they're at it, our heroes that have fought for our country. So good stuff. Um, so uh, the, there is some big news we have for UMP. Um, it's hurt some people and not others, but we now had to go VAT registered. The dreaded tax man has informed us that uh, we now have to pay uh, VAT, VAT, value added tax in the UK here, which is, is horrible indeed. Now we've tried to incorporate the um, uh, the price increase because obviously now we have to pay an extra 20% on all our sales. 20% uh, of our income now has to go to VAT to the tax man, which is which hurts us greatly. Um, we don't make a lot of profit in, with Ultimate Modeling Products. Um, we are a family-run business. Um, uh, a lot of it is in stock and obviously uh, procurement, uh, uh, material procurement, and things like that. So. Uh, but uh, we've had to pop some products up by 10%. Uh, 
Uh, some have gone up by five, and then we've done a lot where we haven't increased the price at all. We've swallowed the, the 20% uh, for the time being, I have to say, um, you know, just to help the transition over. So some of, you might see a price increase over the next year, um, where we just, it, we've got to see how we manage as we are over the next six months. No prices will be going up for the next six months full stop. Um, apart from obviously the ones that already have to incorporate the, the VAT. 20% um, is a lot to soak up um, and it's pretty much most of our profits gone uh, on the VAT, but we'll work through it and uh, see how we do. So we do ask for your uh, understanding on that one and uh, we do apologize we've had to pop the prices up, but it's just one of those things, there's nothing we can get around the tax man, unfortunately. Um, we, we were told that we should have done it nine months ago, uh, which is another uh, hurtful thing our accountant didn't inform us. Uh, which means we've got a large tax bill coming as well because we've still got to pay the VAT historically for the last uh, six six to eight months, I think it is, so ouchie. Uh, but never mind, we'll get through it. Um, also, I'd like to announce that we've got a brand new product being released in October. That is definite. Um, we're just waiting for the stock to turn up. Um, so uh, we've got a new product to release in uh, October, which we're really happy about. It's something that we've been working on for two years, but the company that uh, has been telling us that uh, they can't do it has now said, oh, actually we can. So it's fantastic. Um, so that's it for UMP news. Uh, I think we'll go to ISM news now. Right, okay. Okay, a little bit of sad news for ISM. Uh, after this new show we are not going to do the new show anymore um it won't be well not in the way in shape and form that it is now where it's an hour long presentation or an hour and a half usually presentation with reviews and things like that um paul and i have come to this decision because i mean time's a big thing as well i mean it takes me two days to film record and uh edit the the video um and it's a lot of time and uh, obviously we have to marry up with paul Paul does his, uh, you know, three quarters of an hour each each month as well um, on his slot. But again, most of his is repetition of his stuff from he, he does from his uh, at the bench builds. So um, we thought that we've taken the, the decision to to cut that down. Uh, from now on, it's going to be a monthly update rather than a new show. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the reviews out. They they won't be in there anymore. And uh, what we're going to do is just basically do um, the international scale modern news, uh, UMP news, and uh, the competition winners and the GB and SIG updates. Um, and that's we're going to condense that down. Should only take about 20, 25 minutes every month. Um, it means that I can literally just jump in here, record the show, edit it, get it up, and uh, then uh, obviously we can have a bit of more consistency than we've had over the last year with regards to new shows and things like that. I think it'll be worse, uh, better for all of us, and it'll make it a shorter bite as well and easier to to, uh, to watch all in one sitting as well, which is great. Um, so uh, that's the big news for ISM. Uh, I'm, I think it's going to be a step in the right direction. The new show as it is at one and a half hours, it's a long show, and I know some people really do like it, and we used to like um, producing it as well, but time constraints means, and, and there's a lot of repetition in there as well with the, the Friday night live shows and balls at the bench updates and things like that and a lot of stuff gets repeated so we're just going to trim it down a bit and make it more bite sized and uh, more of a snack than a main meal maybe or three course meal usually. Um, right so don't forget to uh, more or so don't forget to tune in to the Friday night live at the bench show with Paul and the live crew every week. Um, the, obviously there's uh, forum members go through Q&A sessions, we have special guests and everything. Uh, there's always a competition where either e-models or retro analyst models or Ultimate Modern Products sponsor prizes. They're very easy to enter, you just got to type in the comments box, so very easy to win those. Um, and uh, an aircraft on there as well, sorry I forgot to mention you Martin. Um, but uh, there's also a section dedicated to new kits releases every month and a section that goes through all the builds and then what's happening around the ISM forum from Dan and things like that. Um, links are pasted on the ISM Facebook page and on the International Scale Modeler uh, website. Uh, the dates and times, every Friday, I think it goes live 7pm GMT, I'm sure it is. Uh, I haven't written it down, but I'm pretty it's seven or eight GMT, so it's around there. So, uh, so always worth looking out for. It's always a good laugh. The lads always have a crack with the uh, with the people, the members watching, and we get over fifteen hundred views, live views each week. I think so. Uh, it's not bad at all. So really good. So don't forget to check that out every Friday night if you're not out having a few beers, which is why I'm never on there. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to go over to Paul. That's all the ISM news. We're going to go over to Paul now, who's done a uh, review of the Decal Magic from Scal Motorsport. 
Hi everyone, Paul ISM, welcome to another product review. So today we're going to be reviewing the new decal magic from Scale Motorsport. Now, this is a decal setting solution. Um, it's fairly new art, I only seen it arrive on the market a few weeks ago. Uh, I very kindly sent a bottle of it uh, via my friend Brett to Tim, who sent me a bottle of it as well to test. Um, and we're going to see how it holds up uh, against my other two set solutions. So the ones I normally use most are uh, Microscale Microsol and uh, Walther's Solver set. Now that's a lot stronger than Microsol. Uh, they my, are my go-to setting solutions. I use them in water brushes, which are these. These are artist water brushes. Water normally goes in those for um, painters to take out to blend their colours. You put your decal setting solutions in it. There's a brush and you just literally squeeze it to get the solution and out it comes really, really quick and a really easy solution. So my top tip there, right there from me. Um, so we're going to see our performance. What we're going to use it on is a Scale Motorsport decal film. Now I love this stuff. I uh, use it all the time um, on my bikes and it takes so much abuse. It's unreal. So what we're going to do, we're going to cut off three equal amounts. We're going to pop them on these spare parts out of my Porsche kit, which are nicely contoured and shaped. Uh, we're going to see if we can get them to settle around there. So what we're going to probably do is just lay the decal on top, put the film on it and see how it settles it, that's how I normally do it, and then manipulate it around with finger, Q-tip, brush, etc, etc, and see just how it works. That's the plan. So hopefully we have all three um, to do, and we can see just how well it copes with that. So there we are. So we'll head over to the bench overhead, and we'll have a look and see how we get on. Okay, right. So yeah, this is the solution. It's decal magic bar scale motorsport, as I say. Uh, model, sorry, models. Molds, decals, curved surfaces. Put some magic in your build, and apparently it's the only one, the only one solution for your decal applications. Non-toxic. It doesn't smell of anything at all. There's no chemical smell, nothing at all. So we're going to put this through this paste to see what it's like. These are my go-to's. This is Walther's Solver Set. Very, very strong setting solution. So that's using my third um, application after Micro Set Sol, and then this, and then the one that most people use, which is Micro Scale. Microsol. Uh, they both work very well and they are both in my water pens. These are artist water pens uh, which artists fill with water to blend their colours when they're out and about or what have you and these have got decal solutions in. Now these are top tips by my buddy Matthew. You know, I've passed around everywhere and it's one of my best tips I've ever found I think. You can leave them open on the bench, they don't leak, they don't drip and absolutely fantastic. A year and a half these have had solutions in, they've not leaked, nor evaporated, nothing. Uh, they're made by Derwent, you can get them online, you can get them from Hobbycraft, any art store, and they're absolutely superb. So they've got Microset and Solin, that's Microsol, that's Solver Set, sorry, uh, two and three respectively. And we've got this, day, this stuff will be applied with a brush. So what I've got, I've got some flat pieces out of a kit, uh, we're just going to put them on, get the water out of it as much as we can, just put the solution on and see how they settle all by themselves. We're just going to leave them be and uh, get them going. So I'm going to pop a decal in. I'm going to do them one at a time. As one's taken off and popped in, we'll put the other one in. Hopefully when we come back to it, it'll be ready to go straight away. So, like I said, it's a nice curved area. So, um, with some centre detail missing, so it should settle really nice into it. Now we are going to do it the opposite way around then would actually be on the model. Um, so there are some areas that are a little bit rough, uh, purely because the part that was inside is actually a bit more difficult to get. And we've got four of them. So we're gonna use three and see how each one of these settles. So in there, we've got just normal room temperature water. I have a little bottle of water I keep in here. It's only around 20 degrees C in here. So the water's gonna be there or thereabouts. Uh, I don't heat the water up. There's nothing in the water, it's just clean water in a little aluminium tray. So you give it a few seconds to dissolve. Now this stuff, this Scale Motorsport decal film is by far the best you can get in my opinion that I've tried so far anyway. Uh, I use this on a lot of my bikes and it's just truly amazing. It takes so much abuse um, that you can really manipulate it around some really awkward curves. Uh, it is quite frustrating, you will go through a fair old bit of it. Um, and that's that. Now this is the one I normally use which is 10, 20, uh, 12. So that's the SKU number. It's a 12 scale. And like I say, I use it on the bikes more than anything. Uh, but it's absolutely beautiful stuff. It really, really is good. So on the back, they recommend using the Decal Magic Solution. So this stuff isn't new out. It's been out for quite some time by the look of it. And yeah, so we'll see how it performs. This should be ready. Let's have a look. It is. Let's pop the other one in. 
So we're ready for the next one. So we'll do microsol this time. There we go, let's make sure we're off. There we go. Use the tweezers. These are Tamiya's decal tweezers, which are another well worth investment, the cracking tool. And I'm just going to pop it on. We'll do it on an angle so we avoid all the sprue gates. We're not going to cover it, more than likely. And all we're going to do is run our cotton bud over to get as much water out as we can. We're not going to get it all out though because of the complex shape of the piece of plastic. So I'm just going to do that. Let it collect underneath. Anything that's come out. So because of the nature of this stuff, this is how I normally do it. If it's a complex shape, I'll do that. I get as much water out as possible. So you can see the very, very rough outline of it underneath. I'll then get my decal setting solution. This is Microsol, the first one. And I'll liberally coat it in the stuff. Now normally with decals, once you put this stuff on, you don't touch the decal. Uh, this stuff you can. You can really manipulate it. So that's what we're going to do to that. I'm going to pop that on there. Liberally put it on. And then set it aside and let it do its magic. I'm going to put another one on and I'm going to put solver set on next to that, which is this one. It should be ready now. Oh, it's on a little bit of the edge. A couple seconds more. And we're just going to get gravity do its work. And you can see it's starting to get the basic shape already. It's become a lot more flexible, as you can see on the edge. And I want to see what gravity does all by itself and just how well. They will settle it and then I'll come back in, come with a wet Q-tip, cotton bud and a finger and we'll see if we can manipulate it a little bit more nearly there. Now, yeah, like I said, pretty sure the information on this says it's lacquer printed or something like that. I forget now, it's on the inside. I'm not going to open it up because it's a brand new one. Um, but it's just such good stuff. If you haven't used it, you really won't know how good it is. Um, I always like to put a bit of carbon on my bike just for a... A different look. There we are, we're nearly there. Let's pop that one in ready for the next one. So this one's gonna be Wolfer's solver set. There we are. We're just trying to disturb the one next to it. I'm gonna cut a tab off this edge so I know which one's which because I remember then so exactly the same as before we're going to run the cotton board q-tip over to get rid of any excess water or as much of it as we can I'm just going to pull that back there we are it's a bit of a futile effort because of the complex shape of it but once the setting solution starts to take hold as you can see that one is now it will push out anything underneath anyway obviously because it's not a clear film you won't see any silver in anyway on this there we go so this is the Walther solver set in here this is number three I label them one two and three uh, micro set one because the first one that goes down sol two and set uh, solver set three now this is a much much harder set solution so just be a bit more careful with this I will normally put this on after I have it in place with the salt um, because it really does melt. You can see straight away it's starting to conform that. And I'm quite liberal and I will go over it a couple of times just to make sure I've got it where we want it. There we are, there's that. And now the final one, we should be ready for this now. So they're going to sit over there and set it their own well. We'll get the last decal off, which is this one, which is nearly ready. And we're going to open this up, so we'll pop that, get it out of the way. It's there. Got a nice clean Tamiya flat brush there as well. Ready to go. Let's see what it does. There we go. Pop it over just like the other two. And we'll give it a bit of a pressing. Get that 
water out. Gonna pull that up a bit. Like I say, you can abuse this stuff a lot more than normal decals. And I thought because it's their own decal, it made sense to use it to test their product. There we go. Right, so let's wipe the brush off. We're going to pry it liberally, just the way I do with all the others. So, let's pop it on. It's got a lot more surface tension than the other solutions. A little bit more. Yeah, it's got a lot more surface tension on there. Right, okay, so there we go. That's that one. We're going to leave that to one side over there. Pop that back and I put the lid back on that so we don't spill it everywhere. Move the brush, tidy up a little bit, and then we're going to have a little manipulate of these ones we've already just set. So, this one is Microsol, and that one's Solver Set. So, as you can see, it started to conform pretty nicely on their own. Uh, you can see the actual shapes of the indentations inside already on both of them. So, they conform, the Microsol has conformed right around the edges as well. It's gone back on itself, as you can see there. The solver set, not so much yet. Whether it's just got a little bit of a, a kink there. No, not really. But it has been on a little bit longer. And uh, let's see what it does. So, what we're going to do, we're going to wet a cotton bud. Never use anything dry on decals. Always wet, whatever you're using. And we're just going to roll it over the top. Out a little bit. Now there is a point with this stuff where you, it won't take any more abuse and you'll see the actual carbon effect stretch. And uh, at that point it's time to take it back off and start again. So you do get a lot of leeway with it as such but also there is only a certain amount of abuse it will take. That's not bad at all, it's going down well. I'm just going to wet my finger. I'm going to run my finger over lightly. So you see the actual decal still moves. What I'm doing is pushing out any curves or creases that are in there. Causing a few more myself. This is usually part of the course. And what we're going to do, I'm just going to put no more solution on rears. going to use the brush. Which is still wet from being used earlier. Just to manipulate it a little bit more, spread it out. And then I'm going to put a little bit more solution on. And then we'll leave that one be. So there's the Microsoft. That is normally how I would do it, and then leave it alone. And uh, hopefully, you'll get 90% of any creases out of it and anything else. Now, I've got a feeling if I touch it with a cotton bud, the solver set's just going to completely rip up. So I'm going to slightly moisten the brush again and be a little bit more gentle. Like I said, don't normally manipulate it with this stuff on. I normally put this on right at the end after that stage has dried. But we'll see what it does because usually when I touch it, it just it's gone. It shrivels up and it's done for. I'm gonna put a little bit more on just so I've got a wet brush. You like say I think if I touch this with a cotton bud, it's just gonna to stick to the cotton bud and destroy it. And I certainly ain't putting my finger on it. So like I say, the set, sorry, my cassette, sol and solver set I use in conjunction with each other. But for today, as the decal magic is a standalone set and solution, I thought we'd well, see what each one of these would do on their own. Okay, so we've got quite a bit of wrinkle in there, which I did expect to be honest. Now I kind of want to put my finger on it, but 
I kind of know what's going to happen, and it's doing it now. Yeah, it's moving. So no finger on that, which is new anyway. As you can see, it still moves over the surface. I'm going to flip that flap over. There we are. And what we're going to do is going <laughs> to flip that back over. Let me get over there, you. So as I thought, the way I normally do it with a set and sol, sorry, solve a set, and the microsol is the preferred way of me doing it. Uh, this stuff alone doesn't do the job as well as when I use the microset on its own, sol on its own there. Now this is a decal uh, magic stuff. Um, nothing's really happened yet. Um, I've still got a lot of surface tension on top. I've still got the slightly wet brush from before. So I'm going to give that another go over. Uh, it's very barely made any recess into those curve parts on top and underneath. But hey, I'll give it a fair go. So I'm just going to push it around a bit and try and push it into those parts. Hmm, really doesn't look to be doing anything. Okay, let's try the old cotton boards. We'll just wet that again. Get most of the moisture off. And lightly roll over the surface. Hmm. Okie doke. It, uh, yeah, doesn't really seem to be doing anything yet. So if it needs a little bit more, I don't know. Let's try the old finger. It's still loose on the surface, as all the others are. Yeah, right, okay. I was expecting a bit more action out of that, if I'm honest. It really isn't doing it. What I'm going to do is manipulation is not doing a thing. So I'm going to put a lot more on and leave it set. Now, the surface tension's a pain in the backside because it means it doesn't sit. On the entire decal, it just pulls up. Whether that's the issue we're having, I don't know. But you just say it pulls up there rather than sitting on the whole decal. Right, okay, I'm going to leave that to one side. We'll leave that for quite some time and see what it does. Which, to be honest, at the minute is uh, not much. And uh, we'll head back to these two. So, we've got the microcell uh, sole on this side which is conforming it really nicely and the solver set which is doing the same but it doesn't like being manipulated which I knew anyway I knew it would do this um, so let's see we can let's see we get a fresh cotton bud so we're not contaminating it with any other solutions so this is wet again absolutely beautiful we're going all around all that recess detail there as you can see Beautiful. Even see the EPM there sticking through. Here we've got some wrinklage, which is what we'd normally get anyway. And then we've got the solver set, which I've got the cotton bud on it, so I did it as well, because it doesn't like being used on its own. And it's set in well. Yeah. I knew it would. The solver set doesn't like being used on its own. Not I've never literally used it on its own. The tip I got for this was from Paul Budzik. Uh, using the micro set salt, then the solver set. Let the sole do its work, which it's done beautifully there, as you can see. Then come back in with the solver set and finally set it. And that's how I've been doing it on the bikes for a long time now, and it works absolutely fantastic. Um, so, what we're going to do there. Let's leave that be. And we'll let that dry and see how it looks at the end. Because what I'm going to do is let that kind of get dry and then chuck a bit of solver set on it, leave it alone and see what it does. So I'm going to do the exact same way I always do. When I've got to the stage where I'm happy, there's barely any wrinkles. There's one there. Let's go to that one. 
There's barely any wrinkles. Everything's where I want it. I will then normally hit it with solver set. And then just leave it be. That's exactly what we're going to do there. And you can see how using them in conjunction together works better than just using it on its own. So we're going to leave it to one side. We'll come back in a little bit. Let's have a look at this. Uh, yeah, it's still not really doing anything at all. Where's my brush? Is it even softening the decal at all? Um, not really, no. I bet you I could take that back off and put it back on. I spent on there now, what, we're filming for 20 minutes? I'm spent on it for 5 minutes at least. And I bet you I can lift that back off and pop it back on. Yep, drop it on the table. We can pick it back up. We can pop it back in the water. We can put it back down. And it hasn't really done a thing. Hookie dookie. Now, what I think we will do, pop that to one side. We're going to dry it off again. It's still moving around. Oh, it's done nothing to it at all. Oh, okay. I'm going to get all the water back out. I'm going to put more on it. I'm just going to leave it to sit and see what it does for a while. To see to least. My God. Okay. Third application of decal magic. Uh, we still had no real reaction at all. So there we go, it's got liberally coated in it, it's going to leave it to one side, we'll let it be, and we'll come back in, I don't know, 10-15 minutes and see what it looks like. Right, so it's about 30 minutes later, um, <laughs> and the decal magic has done uh, no magic at all. Um, that's pretty dire, and I bet I can get it back off again and put it back on. So 30 minutes later, the third application of the stuff, uh, I have tried manipulating it with the cotton bud, and it wasn't really doing anything, let's try again. No, nope, it's still not doing anything, it's not conforming, it's not sitting, and I bet you I can get it back off and put it back on again. Oh, looky see. I can. Excellent. So, um, yeah, the the only magic there is, is it doesn't do a thing to the, the decal. Excellent, well done. Okay, <laughs> over to these ones. Now, this is the micro uh, sole, which was were beautiful. And then hit it up with micro, uh, sorry, with both the solver set, which is why I always do them. And this is solver set on its own. Now, solver set's fantastic, but I think it does need using in conjunction with Microsoft to get the best out of it. And it's exactly like I say, go watch Paul Budzik's video on decaling. It's a very good video. And um, that's the, the way I do it now. I've got three water pens, label one, two, and three. One's got the micro set in it, the blue one. That goes down first. Then the sole. Once that's set, I hit it with micro sole. And it does that. As you can see, that's conformed. Not fully, because it's not totally dry yet. Uh, that will still conform even more as that dries. It really does sink in there. And once it's, once, like I say, once it's fully dry, it will really uh, conform right the way through all that. Now, the other thing you notice as well when we're talking about this is that the micro uh, sole actually conformed all the edges around first as well, whereas the solver set didn't by itself. It's still quite spongy. So as it's a very good setting solution, I definitely think they work better in conjunction with each other. Um, so something to bear in mind, especially if you're using this carbon film, because it is different to other decals, um, but I thought we'd use it to make it fair, because it's the product that's supposed to be using the decal magic. Um, but for me, I'm going to stick with the way I always do it. Microscale industry is micro sol, so you set, then sol, let it all set, get it conformed, hit it with solver set, leave it alone, and you end up with a beautifully uh, carboned surface. Uh, like I said, I know there's people out there just use a solver set on its own. I think it works better in conjunction, personally. And this stuff is absolutely um, useless, in my opinion. It really is. Um, no. no, I'm not even giving it a thumbs down. It's just getting a <laughs> off me. Um, because that hasn't done a thing. It's absolutely totally useless. And in fact, you know what? I could take that off, stick it on another piece, hit it with solver set, microsol. And it worked perfect. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, there you go. The decal magic that isn't magic at all.
Well done. Awesome. Thank you. Right then, so there we go. Um, yeah, I, I think I gave a pretty fair test. Um, I don't know why I always do it with the Saturn Sol. Uh, sorry, Sol the Saturn and the Microsol used together. Uh, used the Sol set just on its own because the Decal Magic stuff says to use it on its own, so I thought we'd try that. And the Decal Magic as well, which, you know, even another 15 minutes later is uh, still able to pull back off the uh, plastic and uh, has done absolutely nothing at all, uh, completely useless. Whereas my microsold and solar set hit apart is you can see it there really starting to conform beautifully the top one. Works perfect. So decal magic. Not very really magic at all. You need to work your spell out better. Um so yeah, a bit of disappointment. Uh I like scale mode sport stuff, I got a few of their products. And uh, yeah, a bit disappointed with that. So don't know. If anybody else is using it and have better results, please let me know. Uh, obviously my tests aren't the be all and end all of it. Um, if someone's had better success, please let me know. I think it was a fair test. I tried to conform. It's not conforming at all. It's literally as I took the decal sheets off the backing paper out of the water. It's not doing a thing. But if you've had any success, please let me know. I'd be interested to know. And if Scale Motor Sport get happened to see this, I'd like to know your thoughts on it as well because it's a real shame. I love your products. Uh, but that, to me, is pretty useless. Um, and there we are. Like I said, if anyone else has got it, let me know your thoughts. If you tried it, if you haven't tried it, give it a try and let us know what you think. Um, Bit of a shame, but I'll stick to my tried and tested microscale, microset, sol, and Walther sol. So sol set's awesome in conjunction with others. It's a pain to get a hold of in the UK. Uh, Grand Prix model is the only place that stocks it. Because it costs you 10 to 12 pounds delivered, and they very rarely have it in stock. The only place you can get it is the US, because that's where it's made. Um, worth getting, though. Definitely worth getting. And there we go. So, Sky Motor Sports, not so decal magic. Um, bit of a shame. Um, but that's it. I thought we'd give it a fair test, and that's all we can do. There we go. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Paul. Uh, as you can see, that stuff is pretty useless. <laughs> so uh, so there you go. Uh, I think that was quite obvious what Paul said in the video there. Uh, just useless. So uh, we like to do reviews and be honest in the reviews, even if the people have supplied us the stuff. So uh, there you go. Uh, so now we're going to go over to the GBs and SIGs over on ISM. Uh, at the moment, we've got the Warring Weather GB, which is now finished. The reveal show went up a few days ago for that. Well done to the winners. Uh, a nice little um, uh, GB that was too. Uh, we've got the Holy Land uh, G, uh, uh, SIG uh, that started on the 31st of July and runs until the 31st of September. So we've got about two weeks left on that one. And that's basically anything Israeli IAI or ITF. I've got, I've got a problem with my tongue today. Um, the, uh, the GB that's running at the moment that's just started at the beginning of September is the Feline Fever GB uh, and that's basically any vehicle, aircraft, any genre, military uh, with anything feline in its name like panther, leopard, tiger, tomcat, you know, all that sort of thing. Um, a great, uh, I think that's going to be a good GB that one, there's a lot you can do on that one for sure. Uh, we also have a couple of non-ISM SIGs. Uh, we've got the Summer Sci-Fi SIG, is, which is uh, was running until the 30th of September, but has now been um, uh, extended one month to the 31st of October, which is great news because I may just get that finished over there in time to enter it, so I'll have something to enter. And I'll, at least I can say I've entered one GB or SIG this year. Um, so that's going on until the end of October. So you've got six weeks. If you want to enter, you can still enter anything you like in six months as long as it's sci-fi. Um, but if you, if all those people who've got still stuff to do, you've got six weeks left to finish it. So uh, plenty of time and no excuses now because summer's over. Um, and that's it, basically. I, I think all the other the member ones have finished and all the small group builds and things like that have finished now. Uh, we will be in the next, uh, what is it? Where are we now? September. In, at the end of October, we will be doing the polls again for the new GBs and SIGs or, or that we want to see next year on ISM. So make sure you look out for that thread as well, but we'll announce it on uh, next month's update for you. Um, so uh, that's, that's pretty much it as far as the GBs and SIGs go. Uh, we're going to go to another review now. It's a review I did of uh, the Benchvent A300 SD, that one over there, or it used to be called the Graphic uh, Graphic Air A300 SD, not the Benchvent. It used to be the VV. So it's a VV A300 SD. Here's a review. Welcome back to Successful Scale Modeler. I'm Lee. Today we're going to do a review of this. This is the B, uh, Benchvent BV300 SD, uh, which was the Graphic Air A300 SD extractor fan. Now, I've had one of these for three and a half years, four years nearly. And uh, it was one of the first things I bought when I started getting back into modeling in a serious way. 
and um, I bought one, did a review of it, which is up on the channel at the moment, uh, which I'm probably going to take down after I've done this one a little while after. And uh, it's one of the first reviews I ever did for my old channel before it was International Scale Model, it used to be Scale Model Review. And um, it's done quite well. And uh, about, well, about three years ago, uh, Graphic Hair contacted me and said, look, can we put this on our website, please? And I said, yeah, sure, not a problem. And obviously it's directed a lot of traffic and everything, but they recently contacted me about six months ago and said, look, if we send you one, would you do a new review for us? Um, and uh, Because we've noticed your channel and you've, you've updated your cameras and all that sort of angles and things like that. So I said, yeah, sure, no problem. So this arrived about a month ago and it's been sat here because I've been a bit busy over the summer period. And uh, that's thunder you can hear, if you can hear that. And uh, so I said, yeah, sure. So uh, I've got a bit of free time. So I thought now is the time to, to rearrange it. As you can see from over my shoulder here, I've still got my old one in situ. Um, and uh, that's a good, you know, I can't, I've, I can't praise it enough really already before I even started the unboxing. Uh, but uh, it's a fantastic bit of kit and I'd be lost without it. I wouldn't have been able to work in any of the houses I've lived in without that extractor fan. So it's as simple as that. Uh, but uh, what I'll do before we go into the unboxing, I'll give you a few uh, of the uh, stats for the machine so that we've got those out of the way. Um, it's external dimensions are 565 millimeters by 390 by 430. It's still construction finished in a dove gray. Um, it's plastic replaceable spray fume shield, particulate filter, centrifugal blower, external rotor motor type, brushless, ULVD and CSA approved, uh, sealed electrical wiring and switch, downstream of filter, flexible duct, two meters by 100 millimeter diameter with a carry handle. Um, all better filter carry lifetime warranty. Um, it's quite an operation and I can attest to that. It's not too loud. We can still uh, record videos while spraying with it on uh, and you can still hear and everything. Um, the flexi duct can be fixed to a standard domestic 100 mil vent or extractor, other extractor or whatever, or window or um, one of those, you can get a window pane slot and everything and it will fit for it. Uh, it's got horizontal position for uh, spray mounts. You can lay it, you can lay it up vertical like it is, like I've got mine now, or you can actually lay it down on its back and spray down into it as well, which is another thing that it, you can do because the, the tubing, the, the piping comes out the top. Um, uh, accommodates up to R A3 artwork size and a vertical dish for position for model sprays and things like that. And it says light grinding as well. Now it's got a brushless motor and everything. It's a sealed motor, which means you don't get paint fumes in it. It's a sparkless motor. So um, it doesn't, it's not going to ignite any of your noxious fumes that you put in there. I mean, we put lacquer through it all the time and spray thinners directly into it and, you know, airbrush cleaner and everything. Not a problem whatsoever. Uh, filtration, the particular intake filter is a three-stage graduated fiber filter with a high dust holding capacity for long life. Filtration to five micron particles. Uh, spray particulate size varies from 10 to 20 microns, so it's, you know, um, paints and things like that. The dual process of filtration and extraction to atmosphere via flexi duct vastly reduces and or eliminates operator exposure to potentially hazardous substances. I have to say that I don't wear a mask at all when I use this extractor because it literally, if you spray, you're spraying into the booth like you would do with painting anything, it just goes straight in, not a problem at all. And you don't get, you get a whiff obviously, but you don't get, you know, stuff flying around your room and things like that. I mean, once you turn it off, once you've stopped spraying, you turn it off about 30 seconds after you stop spraying, you can't smell it in your room. So it's great if you're smelling, if you um, spray indoors and you've got access to be able to, obviously you've got to get the ducting out a window or something like that, then that's fantastic. You don't need masks. We have to recommend you wear a mask, obviously, but uh, you don't need one. Uh, specification, uh, the fan motor spec is a 230 volt, 50 hertz, 105 watts. Uh, air volume at free air is 350 meters, meters cubed per hour. Average air velocity at filter face is 60 um, meters per second. Average air velocity at hood face is 55 meters per second. And noise level is 58 decibels. Um, and that's pretty much it for uh, de demonstrating adequate control of the risk to health and employees and students in a general substance bloody and uh, and it's fundamental the requirement of control of substances hazardous to health which is COSH and regulations 2002 and 2004. So it's, it's able to uh, you know go to those standards they use it in art shops spray shops and everything so um, what I think I'll do without further ado I'm gonna have to pan the camera out a bit zoom out the camera and uh, we'll have a look at unboxing and see what's in the box and then we'll have a look at uh, cool. That's a good thunder, there's a good storm coming. Um, and uh, we'll have a look at uh, how easy it is to put together and install and then we'll have a look at it working as well. So uh, over to the unboxing.
Right, over to the unboxing, and as you can see here, it's come in this large box, which has found its way all the way to Menorca in the middle of the Mediterranean. It was sent, uh, I think it got here in about four days from UK, which isn't bad at all, believe me. So I'm quite impressed with the way that they sent it. Uh, it's packaged very well in this great strong uh, double, double walled box, and it's a sturdy one, as you can see. It takes a lot to bend it as well, so it's a good, good box, not like those cheapy ones. You can find on eBay. Uh, as you can see, as you open it, uh, first thing you come to is this. It's all bubble wrapped and it's all in one unit. Now, inside the bubble wrap, you also have, let me lift it out so you can see. It's, back, it's in there that well. Right, okay, there you go. So, there you can see um, how it's packed and everything. Packed really well and it's all packed in one piece bubble wrap like. So, so if we take that out, we've got there, we've got the box, we don't need that. Okay, so there you have, this is how it comes in, uh, wrapped and packed in bubble wrap, in that very sturdy box. You can see here, we've got polystyrene here on the other side as well, to stop it on the side of the boxes. We'll get rid of that. On the front, we've got the cover and the instruction manual, so I'm just going to take that off. Okay, we'll pop that down there. And then we've got this out there, the unit itself here. Uh, now, power lead. Um, very kind of them to supply me with a European one as well. And it doesn't matter where in the world you are, they will supply you with the appropriate power pack. I know because we've done a, a group build on ISM and I think we had 25 people in the end for the group build. It got up very cheap. And uh, we had people from Canada, USA, uh, Australia, England, Europe, and they all had the correct plugs and everything for the power pack. So no problems wherever you live in the world, they can get it to you with the correct fitments. Now, the first thing I notice, God, that is overhead. Uh, first thing I notice about this is it's a different colour. As you can see, the light, like a, a very light grey, whitey grey, very cream grey, and we've got uh, this dark grey. Now I do like this new uh, colour, it's very nice indeed. Uh, much more uh, now. Uh, on, the, on the panel itself, it's got a uh, bench vent. Uh, here it's got a uh, filter replacement test record. Uh, what, uh, what model it is, um, when the filter change was first placed in, so you've got a uh, thing there saying when the new filter was in, and then you can, this is obviously if it's for industrial and everything, you can keep an idea, but it's good for yourself. You can say to yourself, okay, well, I know I need to, it was changed then, but really when, it, when this is full of paint, that's when you know you're gonna change it, okay? So uh, on the side here, we've also got an earth to the front and the rear panels. Now, the only problem with that is that I can see uh, the old one doesn't have that on at all. Uh, the only problem I can see you can have that is when you take the front panel off, this is still going to be connected. So you're going to want a, a little spanner and everything to take that apart. As you can see here, you've got a two meter hose. Okay, standard 100 millimeter. So that's prime. that will fit to anywhere you want to. And apart from that, on the back, you can see it's angled. You can see these angles here for the corner. Um, and that does, as you can see, fits in the corner move it out of the way as you can see here it fits in the corner very well indeed uh, so apart from that that's uh, the that's basically it coming out of the box um, and it does look uh, a nice bit of kit as well so uh, what I'm going to do now I'll tell you what I'll do we'll take the front off for you the, the front panel comes off quite easily just undo these four things and off it slides like so now you've got this earth wire down here so you have to be careful but that's all you need to do as you can see there, to change the filter. The filter just pops out. Whoa, that is overhead. Uh, and that's it. Now you buy these filters uh, from graphicair.co.uk. I think they're about 50, 60 pounds for three. One of these, depends how much spraying you do, obviously, um, but they last anywhere. They can last anywhere from three to three months to a year. I change mine probably about once every six months. Um, so. Uh, it'll cost you every 18 months, it'll cost you about 60 quid, something like that. Uh, inside, as you can see, uh, you've got the brushless motor inside uh, a guarded frame and box. 
Uh, and other than that, it's just wiring. The wiring is all sealed, um, heat sealed, heat shrink wrapped and everything. Uh, the build quality is fantastic. You've got a rubber cover of the thing there, which makes sure that the filter sits right up against the thing. And then to pop it back together again, literally you slide it on, like so. Do up the handles. properly and that's it all done I don't, I don't think I'll pop that one in there. right and there you go she's all ready now to fit and use so what we'll do is I'm going to move the cameras about um, just show you uh, what it's like oh no before I do that I'll leave that there for you I'm just going to show you what we do with this. Now this is, this helps guide the paint into the extractor. And it's basically like a little hood. And it's basically foam board, which are foam X, which you can buy from anywhere. And it comes like so. Now this has got, uh, it's got this Velcro all the way along one edge and all the way around the outside here is Velcro and it should fit like so. So you can spray into it and everything uh, like this and this will guide more of the paint all the way and, and creates more of a flow for the motor. The one thing with this is it does stop a lot of light getting onto if you're spraying for models you need the light to see what you're doing and everything. Uh, my first idea was to cut a square on the top and pop one of these lights over the top. So if you did that, it would look fine. It would be absolutely giant and dandy indeed. So that was the idea initially. Right, we were gonna do that. Um, and, uh, but I thought, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Because we do top down most of the time, I changed it, as you can see from the run at the back, to doing it that way. And that, believe it or not, is much, much easier. You can just pop any light over the top, then again, that light fits over the top. And they've got a good sturdy base to work with, and the sides still create the flow for you if you want. Um, and believe me, once you've got a light over there, because this is all white, it does create a nice tone of light in there for when you're working and everything, so you can see what you're doing and how you're going about it. Very good, very good and very well thought out indeed. Um, it's not meant to go this way. Uh, as you can see from this one, and uh, I'll just zoom you in. Now, as you can see from this one, uh, what I've done is I've arranged, you know, thing, uh, all my pincers and clamps on there, obviously airbrushed in a chart. Uh, and you can see how I've always had it this way. You can see the colors different as well. Um, you can see this, this uh, filter now is not far off and heat changing, probably a couple more weeks worth of spraying. If you're doing a model, one more model on that, and that's going to need changing. What I do do, because I spray in a certain direction, I turn it around. So what I'm going to do before I do my next spray is I will take that out, turn it around, because obviously I spray down into that way, um, and then this way is still unclogged completely, and then I've used up all the corners, and it's not wasting anything at all. But as you can see, it's quite a nice little spray bag. Let's get this out there. This is my son's uh, little tank that he's just done, a little Arma Fast uh, tank. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it's a well-used booth. I've had it for four years covered in paint and odds and sods and things like that. So but you can see what I've done is I've cut these sections here so where it's in the corner I can splay it out. You know I can when I'm spraying I bring these in like so and then that creates the draft for me. But while I'm not spraying I've got that open so I have more bench space and it doesn't encroach on my bench space whatsoever. So uh, great little idea as I say that can be pushed back when I spray, because it's portable, I just bring it forward like that and I can spray from the corner without having to get my legs stuck under the corner building and things like that as well. So very handy indeed. And as you can see, you've got the pipe up going out the top here, which goes into a duct in the wall that I've put in, which you would have seen earlier. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this one out. Uh, I'm going to show you putting the other, well, I don't need to show you putting it together. You've already seen it. Um, and I'll put the other one in its place and then we'll do a quick test for you. So there you go, as you can see, all sorted in there. That took all of two minutes to do. I've cut the, the, uh, 
the uh, shroud up again as well, so I've got it so I can have it this way, so I can have a flexible in or out. Uh, all I've got to do now is just tape in uh, a couple of our ultimate thinner guides uh, on either side to make it look nice and colourful. Um, it's uh, I, I usually put a bit of uh, kitchen roll on there as well or something to do it up. But I'll tell you what I'll do now, I'll fire it up uh, and so you can listen to see how hard it is. Here you go. Now I'll carry on talking over the top of that and I haven't raised my voice, in fact I'm lowering it and you can tell that you can still hear me quite normally. So it's great for filming if you do videos and things like that as well. But it doesn't interrupt any noise and I have to say this is a lot quieter than the other model, uh, the older model that I have. So they've obviously upgraded some parts in the motor inside or uh, something like that, but that is definitely a lot uh, quieter than it was before. So I've got no problem shooting any videos while that's going. Uh, as you can tell from my voice, I haven't raised it at all. In fact, I'll take it down to a whisper and I bet you can still hear it. Uh, so uh, so there you go. That is the uh, Bench Bend uh, BB300SD in situ in my room and uh, it's nice to have a new shiny thing I have to say. So we'll go back to the main camera. Okay, well there you go. That's the Bench Vent 300 uh, BV300 SD. Uh, it is a fantastic bit of kit. I have to say it's I think it's about 280 pounds plus delivery if you're uh, uh, from their website it's graphicair.co.uk be sure to go over and visit them. They've just uh, got it on sale at the moment. They've just knocked some money off. Um, I think we're also trying to get to uh, another group buy together on the forums at the moment to see if we can get uh, some more discount. Last time we got 10 or 15% discount off for 25 people. Um, and everyone got theirs uh, all around the world, Australia, Canada, America, Europe, Italy, you know, all, all over the place. I think there was someone from Poland or Russia as well. So uh, they send everywhere in the world. And I have to say that that thing over there is probably the best three, I think it was 300 odd pounds when I bought it, but um, it was one of the best 300 pounds I've ever spent, not only just for my own safety and uh, well-being, uh, health wise you can't really have a better tool in your uh, workshop if you're spraying paint then you need an extractor fan there's nothing else will do uh, you know you're going to have these uh, fumes and paint uh, vapor molecules laying on everything otherwise uh, all around your room you know you can sit there with a the mask on you can take the mask off half an hour later uh, and you'll still be breathing the particulates that are in the air because they haven't been taken out, siphoned out of the room at all. So uh, this thing is a must. Uh, you know, you must have an extractor in if you're going to be painting. And the thing is, if you're going to get a, a one, you, I know you can get some cheapies on eBay for 120 quid or whatever, but they're, 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 they're kind of useless, especially when you're using enamels and lacquers and things like that or anything nasty. And uh, to be honest with you, any paint is nasty when it's in a particulate form and you have to breathe it. Uh, whether it be non-toxic or not. If you're breathing vapour and, and uh, particulates, then it's not good for your lungs whatsoever. Uh, there's just one other thing I wanted to have a look at. Obviously, we've got this little instruction manual as well that's in there. I just wanted to show you it before we uh, close. Um, it's in a little little baggie. And it basically, uh, we'll go to the overhead. As you can see, it's just uh, operating instructions and warranty information. Um, it just tells you a bit about the bench vent itself open it up um, and then you've got your lifetime guarantee you register at benchvent.com which is part of graphic air i think they're the same company uh, here it tells you all the motors or uh, all the other things here uh, about the uh, unit itself um, all the stats and technical bits and bobs uh, you've got a declaration of conformity the ec directive and things like that lifetime warranty details and on the back health and safety information and then you've got the serial number the date it was made and uh, the filter reference as well. So uh, it must be the type of filter that they put on there. But uh, again, nice little thing. I've still got mine from the original one that I had um, many, many years ago. And I've got to say, to be honest with you, I didn't need a new one. Uh, I could have done with that for, I would think that would last me a lifetime really. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't paint model much these days, but um, I think that thing is built to last. It's very sturdy, very well built. Um, it's a lovely bit of kit. It's well made, that's what I can say. And it does the job that it's advertised as to do. Um, and uh, I don't think you can get a much better one at all. And that isn't because uh, they've sent me a freebie. Uh, I've had one for three and a half years, four years now, and I'm, I, as happy with it today as I was the day I bought it. And if you have a look at the old video, you can see how pleased I was to get it, I was quite excited. And uh, nothing has changed on that whatsoever. Um, and I think it's probably 
apart from my airbrush, which is the Ultimate Apex, of course, uh, that thing is probably the most important thing in my uh, studio or man cave because that keeps the rest of my man cave safe and clean and it keeps me safe and clean as well. So uh, it's very, it's a 300 pounds, very well spent. And I suggest you go over to the guys at graphicair.co.uk, uh, hit them up. If you've got any questions whatsoever, they're more, they're very, very helpful. They've got a uh, new uh, guy who's head of sales and things like that there. And uh, Adam, I believe his name is, and he will help you out as much as you want. Um, it really is a good thing. The only thing is, I've now got a second-hand one to sell, uh, and I believe John Goldsbury, it's got your name on it. So I'll, I'll hit you up soon when I'm back in the UK next, John, and uh, you can have my old one. But, I mean, for me, uh, the Benchvent uh, BV300 SD, it's the best extractor on the market for modeling. Um, I don't think you can get much better for the money, and to be honest with you, I totally, totally recommend 110% that you go out and get one. And uh, it's one of those uh, reviews that I'm gonna give an 11 out of 10, which I don't think I've done before, because that is the most important bit kit in my in my man cave. So uh, that's the Benchfren BV300 SD from graphicair.co.uk. Go out and get one, a fantastic bit of kit. Until next time, take care, bye-bye. Well, there you go. Uh, as you can tell from that review, I am thoroughly impressed with that bit of kit. It is, is my favorite bit of kit in my man cave. Um, I've had mine since I first got back into modeling, um, you know, and for safety re wise, there's those little kits you can buy. I think the Sparmax do one and a couple of other people do one. They're useless. Um, if you have a look, everyone who does a lot of modeling has got one of those. Those little ones are, uh, you know, a the third, a quarter of the power of that that can suck that out. So that keeps this room and my health, health and safety free. So, uh, right, now we're gonna go over to, back to ICM News, we're gonna do the competitions uh, for July and August, the winners. Right, okay, so the winners for the July competition, and the prizes were uh, Dragon's brand new 135 IDF Magak with ERA, and from Ultimate it was a full set of weathering washes. And the winners of that is for the Dragons uh, 135 uh, Magak is Stokesy44 from the Midlands in the UK. Well done, Stokesy44. Uh, you get the uh, 135 IDF Magak from eModels. Well done. And from Ultimate, uh, we've got a full set of weathering washes. And the winner of that is Lad IP63 from USA. It could be Lady P63 or Lad IP63. I don't know. So I'm, I'm going on a side of caution there. Uh, from USA, well done. You won the uh, full set of the weathering washes. If both of you people could uh, PM me on ISM, that would be great. Your names and addresses. We'll get those prizes out to you ASAP. And now we'll go over to the August winners. Okay, so the August prizes were, from eModels, we had Meng's brand new 148 F35A Lightning 2, one that I would really like the look of. And uh, from Ultimate, we had the triple pack of our soon to be discontinued 120 milliliter oxide gelb and olive paints. Uh, so let's hunt on over and find out who the winners are. Okay, so the winner of Meng's brand new 148F35A Lightning 2 from eModels is Dr. Sprue from New England, USA. Uh, well done, Dr. Sprue, you get that fantastic kit. I really do like the look of that one myself. I, I think I may have to invest in that to put in the stash to do when I retire. Uh, and now we go to the ultimate prize, which is the soon to be discon discontinued 120 milliliter triple pack of olive oxide and gal primer. And the winner of that is Nev from Whitstable in the UK. Well done, Nev. Uh, well done to both of you. If you can PM me your names and addresses on uh, International Scale Modder, that would be fantastic. And we get these prizes out to you ASAP. Thanks everyone for entering. And this month's prizes are uh, for September. We've got a, a, the brand new Ebros 120T Lotus Type 91 F1 car. Again, another fantastic looking car. I know Paul wants this one as well, so it's great. So you can all snatch it from under his nose. And from Ultimate Modern Products, we have the triple pack of the Ultimate Burnishing Fluid. Uh, so uh, definitely a uh, definite uh, one for the, um, <coughs> the AFE guys there. Um, so just all you do to have a chance to win these prizes is to go over to International Scale Modeler, inscalemodeler.com. Um, enter the competition thread for this month, which is September, the free prize draw, and all you have to do is make a post on that thread and you're entered. That's it, simple as that, and the winners will be announced on the monthly updates going forward. Okay, now, so we're gonna go over to the build sections. Uh, I haven't actually built any models, although I think I have pretty much finished one, uh, which we'll go over and have a look at at the moment, uh, but most of mine's 3D stuff, so let's go and have a look at my little section. Okay, so my build update, it's not gonna be massive, but, but, 
we do have this. This is the Pegasus Hobbies, Hobbies uh, 1350 Cosmostrator. It's a pretty simple thing um, that uh, didn't go together particularly well. I thought, oh, that'd be a quick, easy one to enter into the Lysis's sci-fi SIG. Um, it turned out to be um, a bit of a mare with uh, seam lines and things like that. Uh, it's a bit of a filler queen, actually. Uh, but if I take you to the overhead, uh, let's just zoom you in a bit as well. Okay, you're gonna get a lot of glare from this. Now the seam lines are plenty on this. There were absolutely tons and tons and tons of them uh, all around uh, the uh, body itself. Um, you can see all of these parts where the nacelles joined were, they were quite gappy, so they've all been filled and been painted. And uh, this is the top, top thing of it. Um, I've got to be really careful not to bend all these uh, spikes and everything as well. Uh, now I had a problem with this in the fact that um, when I sprayed it, uh, it went down um, and it was just before uh, we had a heat wave and I put the base down, the base down was lovely and smooth and um, we had a massive heat wave and I sprayed it with uh, Alclad, believe it or not, um, and uh, it didn't take very well at all. It's um, literally, I was shooting from probably an inch away from the, from the model itself and it was still drying before it hit the model. Um, it was it was 40 odd degrees so uh, I waited I dried it I thought what I want to do is I'll smother it in gloss and fingers crossed that will do the job um, but it didn't really cover it up that much I'm gonna give it it's still a little bit rough I don't know if you can hear this but I'll do that near the uh, microphone so you should have been able to hear that um, so there is still a bit of um, I'm gonna gloss that again maybe smooth that out a bit uh, but I, what I do like about it is um, it should have been a solid like chromey affair as you can see it's, it pretty much looks that way anyway but there is uh, I don't think the camera's picking it up but there is a tonal variation uh, due to the way that the way the paint has dried in some places before it's hit the model where it hasn't and it's actually given it quite a, a different look um, and I'm going to remember that method for the future and I quite like it because it's not a uniform Thing. So I'm going to give it another gloss coat, maybe two even, uh, just a teeny tiny bit of weather in here and there. I just need to put in some lines and things like that. And maybe what I might do is, uh, and the nay sounds, I'll, I'll pop the bottom of the rockets either black or red, and that's it. But that's pretty, it's a very basic thing, um, but obviously it being round, it's the same with the other Pegasus Hobby stuff I've done. Um, you do need to fill it and sand it, and uh, I did sand that for quite a while, but still, it's not bad, it's uh, something that's nearly done, that's for sure. Okay, what else have we doing? Well, the rest of the stuff is 3D print. Um, and the first thing is, which I've literally just got to gloss this again. If we go over to the overhead, you'll be able to see, and I'll zoom you in a bit as well. Um, now this is for, I did this for a friend, um, and it's, uh, if anyone watches Game of Thrones, you will know immediately what this is. But this was uh, 3D printed. You can see the original color of the print right there. Um, and uh, it was 3D printed and then uh, it was painted, I've base coated it with um, UMP gloss black. Uh, then I went over with a Tamiya gold and I went use the Tamiya gold because I didn't want it too goldy, I wanted a little brassy gold and that's, that's a much better gold. And then I've used UMP dark dirt on there as well. And as you can see, it's come out quite well, I think. Um, and that's gonna, I'm just gonna uh, glue, hot gun glue, uh, uh, safety pin in there so he can put it on his lapel but he's my mate's a, a real mad Game of Thrones fan um, so I think he's going to absolutely love that um, <laughs> but it's just a little something I did uh, so you can see I've been doing stuff some things anyway so that's that that's I'm quite chuffed with that because I thought it was um, uh, quite nice we've also got uh, this uh, now this here is a spaceship and I can't remember for the life of me uh, what the program was, but again, it's a 3D printed, going to the overhead, um, and you can see, again, it hasn't come out too well here. Um, it was printed that way up on uh, on supports, uh, but it looks like the printer had a problem with these wing parts here. Um, and it's just on that side, and you can see at the back here, um, where we're gonna need some filing. But uh, the, the, the quality is not bad at all. I mean, we're not far off uh, 3D printers being able to print models. I mean, that's that's not bad at all. Um, you know, I mean, you've got the cockpit in there, it's all printed as one piece, it just needs a little file here and there, and then I'm gonna go over with, excuse me. Right, go back to the main camera, I'm gonna go use some of this. Now this is XTC 3D brush on coating for 3D printed parts, and it's, it's basically, a, it's a two part resin 
Um, I don't know what you mean, it's some sort of uh, epoxy resin or something like that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a review of this uh, because I haven't used it yet. Um, but uh, I'm going to use it on a test piece first, which I'll show you in a second. But I'm really uh, excited about that because it might cut out a lot of work on a 3D. Uh, now this, this one here, as you can see from the overhead, this is going to have to be filed. Uh, I'm going to fill it first uh, and then file it down. Um, and, but I'm going to leave all these striated stuff on the fuselage here because I think that adds a nice effect. And to be honest with you, you know, that's not far off. Uh, a decent model to be able to, to be painted at all. And I was quite impressed with the way that came out. I did it on a fast setting, um, and if I did it on a medium or a fine, it'll come out even better than that. I just wanted to see how it came out. So quite impressed with that, so that's another thing. Uh, we've then got uh, this. Uh, now this is fantastic. Uh, I should have painted it in a different color, uh, printed it in a different color, but it's what was in the printer at the time. This is a cutaway moon, as you can see. I'll go to the overhead. Let's just zoom it out a bit because it's a bit. There you go. Um, it's a cutaway moon, as you can see, surface of the moon, um, and it's come out really well, really good indeed. Uh, there's just ever so slight lines in there, and I printed this on a fast. Problem is, well, I didn't. Oh, I didn't want to print it with supports. We've got a lot of this striated effect here, but that can be sanded down. Uh, and there's a little bit there as well in the top of there where the overhangs and I didn't put any supports in. People who've got 3D printers will understand what I'm talking about. Uh, supports are bits where the, it goes up into the model uh, but it, what it does you have to take them out and you always have to fix it and sand it and everything else. It's an absolute ball ache. Uh, inside really good quality as you can see. Um, it's a nice little scene in there. Zoom you in a bit, sorry. There you go, just so you can see. There's a great little scene in there and uh, it's uh, printed straight out of the printer like that. So um, you can see that, uh, oops, it's good quality. Um, it's come out really well. And again, that was on a medium print, not a fine print. So I could have got it even better than that. Uh, but I think that, that took 19 hours to print. So it, it does take quite a while. Um, but that needs a little bit of work. Again, this is what I'm hoping this is gonna come in for. I'm gonna sand some bits down, take all the really high points off and then resin it. I may not resin it in all places, but just in certain places, just to smooth it out a bit. Not too much work involved in that, but I've got a really crazy paint scheme in mind for this. And uh, I'm really looking forward to doing that because it's going to make a nice ornament as well, actually, or oh, in my man cave anyway. Uh, so we've got that. Uh, and what else? I've also got this, which was 3D printed. Uh, and if you can go to the overhead, you can see it is a Darth Buddha. <laughs> I know, you know me, I do want I'm a Darth Vader and uh, on uh, a lot of the places like Thingiverse and things like that you can see that they, there's lots of different types of Darth and I'm, I'm gradually printing them all at the moment. Uh, I've got another Darth Vader that I've printed which I think I've showed you before. Uh, but this one came out of the printer literally a day ago. Uh, as you can see it's, it's really good, a funky idea. Um, again, it needs a little bit tied up where it said overhang. Well, I didn't print with overhangs, um, but not, not a great deal. And again, I'm going to test the, uh, the resin thing out on this. So what I'm going to do with the resin thing is I'm going to, you know, tidy it up, uh, sand it all, tidy it up, and then put the resin over and then paint it with a primer and see how it comes out. And that way we should be able to uh, see any imperfections or what, uh, how far that goes uh, to make it look really nice. Um, I'm hoping this is gonna work. It's not cheap, it's about 20 quid a box, but uh, if it works, it'll be worth its weight in gold, that's for sure. And that is is it, as far as my bench update goes. You can see it's been 3D printed, most of it. Um, but I've got that Cosmos Strator. I'm gonna put another coat of gloss on there, and that is done um, with a little tiny bit of weathering. So I literally have got about an hour's worth of work to do on that, and that's done. So uh, I'm gonna have something finished like this for the, uh, for the summer sci-fi SIG, at least I can say I've finished one SIG this year. Uh, thanks for the extension, by the way. Um, and uh, my 3D bits and bobs here. Uh, I've got lots of other things I want to 3D print as well. And um, it's easy to do that because literally you, you put the design in, let the printer print for hours, and it doesn't you can work while it is because the printer's right next to my computer. So, uh, But you're getting, the, the prints are getting better and better as I'm work, work learning how to you know, nail down into the settings on the printer as well. So hopefully soon we'll uh, have uh, much better stuff as well. Uh, well, I will say, uh, in the next month or so, I'm going to have uh, an announcement with regards to the 3D printing as well, which should be quite exciting. So uh, look out for that. It'll be on the channel as an update, I'm sure. So uh, that's it. So we'll take you back to the new show. That's my very tiny bench update. See you in a bit. Well, there you go. That's my little build update. As you can see, not a lot going on, but at least I've managed to nearly finish something. 
and uh, I've got some 3D stuff that I've been messing around with. Um, I've got a bit of an announcement for the 3D printer as well, um, a little service that I'm going to offer very soon, uh, but uh, we'll get into that at another time, maybe on the next update. Um, <clears throat> but that aside, we're going to go over to Paul now and see what he's been working on in the last month or so. Over to Paul. Okay, thanks Lee. So, welcome to another section of the news show. Uh, not a massive amount to talk about this month. I went over most of it in my last bench update. If you want to go watch that, go and have a look. Um, most importantly, the live show going from strength to strength as always. Um, we're getting more and more of you guys on as guests, you regular viewers. We've got channels um, or interesting personalities. Uh, we've got you guys on as guests. We had Les on the other night, which is an absolutely fantastic interview. Carl the week before, John the week before that, and excellent guest. Very, very interesting interviews. Les is was a fantastic interview. Uh, if you're not watched that, go back and watch it. Probably one of our best interviews and shows ever, I think. It was very, very good. Uh, this week we've got Mark Spruce Urgence. That's going to be good again. The week after, hopefully, Sam McCord. And so on and so forth. So I'm going to try and get more and more regular people on. Because uh, I think they're more interesting, to be honest. And, uh, yeah, see people's views and opinions on stuff. And uh, get through, put through the paces by Brett and his Q&A. Uh, speaking of Sam McCord, this is the Porsche I'm building for his appreciation build. Um, it's a Revel kit, I reviewed it the other day on the channel, it's a lovely little kit, uh, I've made good progress on it, but you're not going to see it today, unfortunately, you will in a couple of days though, um, and it's a cracking kit for the money, it's a better kit than the Tamiya kit by the look of it, um, and it's great, great little kit, so if you want to take part in this build, it's any Porsche car kit, uh, it started a week ago, you've got three weeks left to build, and all you got to do is go to the forum, start a build thread, show us the build kit, show us some in progress build shots, a final reveal, and that's it, you give me the pipeline to win some prizes we have got prizes some pretty good ones as well well one definitely good one uh from ian dalthwaite uh it's a wrc backpack which is absolutely fantastic uh and that's it if you want to go show your dedication to sam who's a cracking guy uh pick a porsche kit and come and have a look like i say you're not going to see mine today uh, i've not got enough progress on all my builds to warrant me filming a completely new section uh so i'm going to recycle my last build update from a week or so ago and in a couple of days when I've got some progress on my build, I'll do another bench update. I'll just be filming the same stuff. And I want to show the Africa Twin. I didn't have to get it out of the display case behind me. Uh, so I'm going to recycle the footage a little bit. Um, and that's that. So not much from what else to say, really. Facebook and the forum is busy. And uh, that's it. Live shows absolutely fantastic. It's going from strength to strength every single week. Uh, thanks to our regular viewers and contributors and people who take part in the chat. And, and everything. It really is absolutely fantastic. So let's go and have a look at my build. We'll start off with the Africa Twin. Let's go and have a look at that. So, as you can see, there she is. Um, like I said, the body panels, I am not 100% happy with. A uh, bit of a nightmare with it. Oh, when a 2K cleared it, I used 2K again on this, which I haven't used for a long time. Um, it gives an absolutely fantastic finish. This finish you can see on the bike is straight out the airbrush. It's not been polished or even waxed. It's literally straight out the gun, straight onto the bike after curing. Uh, when I was doing it, I put them in a, under a box so no dust settled on them. Unbeknownst to me, uh, underneath the box, two parts have fell against each other and glued themselves together. So I had to prise them apart, which ruined the paint job, ruined the plastic and ruined the decals. So this being a brand new kit, uh, Hobbyco UK doesn't have the parts in stock. And they need a special order from Japan for me, which is going to take four to six weeks. Now, it was either I put the bike on hold for that long, wait for the parts to come, which I really didn't want to do. Or I crack on and get it finished, which is what I did. Um, so this bodywork isn't about final bodywork. I'm going to completely redo the bodywork. Uh, but for what it is, it actually looks okay. If you don't look too close, you can't see the floors. And it doesn't look uh, too bad. Uh, but it's a stunning kit. It really is a phenomenal kit. It's a lot of money. I reckon I've got nearly £300 invested in that thing. 200 quid for the kit, 30 quid on the chain, which is an excellent little chain. That's a worthy addition. Paints, um, obviously the new body panel is going to have a bit of value as well. So it's not a cheap kit, but it's thoroughly enjoyable to build. I added a few little details on it, like uh, carbon uh, exhaust covers on the silencer and the pipes down the bottom. Uh, a few of the bits and bobs in carbon. Other than that, it's completely out of the box, but uh, done a lot of work on the metals. Nothing that touches is the same colour, even if they're supposed to be. There's a slight tonal difference in them, um, just to try and give it... A bit of interest and i think that's what makes them look real um thoroughly enjoyable kit and i'm very happy how it turned out once you get those body panels done i'll be very happy it sits in there my god i always get this wrong way around just there it sits next to the little bikes absolutely dwarfs them i have to take a shelf out to fit it in um <laughs> just certainly interesting um 
but yeah, it's a lovely kit. Highly recommend that one. So there you are. Stunning kit. Absolutely beautiful. Right, I'm going to take you overhead and I'll look at what else I've been working on. Okay, right. First up, um, finished the bike. Kind of got the mojo back for cars and bikes. Now, excuse my hands. I'm covered in primer. You'll see why in a minute. Um, cruising eBay one night and I found this kit. Um, this is an RPM kit of one of my all-time favourite cars. Uh, quite a rare car as well. And it is the RS1700 Turbo. Now, these were... Um, Ford Motorsport took a few cars back in the 80s. Marfrey Escort, which is your little typical front-wheel drive mundane shopping car. Uh, that thing there. They were lucky to push out 100 horsepower in the XR3 variants. And about 104, 105 in XR3i. Uh, Ford took these with the intention, I think it was to take rallying, and so they made them rear wheel drive, stuck a big body kit on them, and stuck a huge stonking uh, Cosworth YB, well, the original YB, I think it was the uh, BDL engine, I think they called it, uh, so it's a turbocharged Munster, rear wheel drive, pushing about 350 horse, and about 380 foot pound of torque out the back end, sadly the project was scrapped, um, I believe most of the bodies were crushed, which is a real shame, and there's only a few left in existence. I believe someone to South Africa to rally. And there's a couple of road going cars left. White and blue. Diamond blue. And I believe a one-off blue colour by Ford. Uh, that was that one-off. When they needed to colour match some panels, they couldn't do it. Um, it was scrapped on the RS200, if you're up on your Ford history. Uh, that came to fruition. And Ford went Group B rallying instead. It's a real shame. But that really is the original Escort Cosworth. Beautiful. So this is a little 143rd kit. Not something I would usually buy. But I saw that, absolutely love that car, it's mental, and I uh, thought I'm having that. RPM's a UK company, this thing's out of production, and I paid £65 for this, which is a lot of money, uh, but to be fair, that was its price new. So this is where we're at, if you saw the last year of the day, you would have seen this was white. Um, I wasn't happy with the finish, so I completely stripped it back with some lacquer thinner, it's a resin body. Uh, I primed it with Tamiya originally, and I went over it with zero paint. Not sure what happened, got a really odd reaction. With the time in the zero, and we got some cracking in the paints. Now, a lot of people have said, and well, no, a few people have said they've had issues with zero paints. I haven't as yet, um, but wasn't happy with the finish. So, I completely stripped it back. It's UMP grey now. Uh, I'm not sure what white we're going to do. I don't want to go with the diamond white, so I'll just go with a standard white instead, uh, just to get it done. Diamond white, it's not really, it's just a, yeah, it's, it's a white. It's not that specific a colour um, on a model anyway. So, I don't know what to do, but it's a beautiful resin body. Really is nicely detailed, um, lovely looking, beautiful wide arches, absolutely fantastic. So that's ready to go. Uh, the interior is all done. Hang on, just pull my roll cage out, reckon it, give me a sec. Let me just pop that back in before I go destroying everything, all my hard work. There we go. So it's a very basic interior, and for the most part, the call out seem to be black. <laughs> So it is. It's all black inside. Uh, you're not going to see a lot. It's not a highly detailed interior. There is a little bit of detail there. You've got a steering wheel. There is an instrument panel there. There is a decal to go on, which I haven't done yet. We've got these beautiful split rim wheels, which are very nice. Uh, once we get the body on, which is a fantastic fit. It really, really is a high quality kit. So much so that it actually clicks in place at the back. And if we can get the back end on properly, which it doesn't want to do at the minute. That's near or near about. Uh, it's going to sit a little bit lower on the back end once you get it clicked in properly. Um, and that's how it's going to look. Uh, like I say, I'm a huge Ford fan. So it's going to be a very nice addition. And uh, looking forward to that. So that shouldn't take too long to do. And then I've got the Porsche build coming up in uh, a few days as well. Very, very basic instructions as well. Literally a sheet. But at least it's a proper printer sheet and not some crappy photocopy thing. And your part list. On the back, they do a few other kids next to an Escort Cosworth police car, which <laughs> I have got my eye on, thinking, ooh, that'd be interesting to do. Like I say, not my usual scale, but I'll go down smaller you know, um, to get that, because it's a lovely kit. Really is a nice little kit, actually. Oh, brake discs as well, I forgot about those, there you go. Some brake discs and calipers. So you can see those through the wheels, which is a nice little touch. Uh, there's a few other bits and bobs of the kit as well. You do get photo etch, there's a load of photo etch in the bottom there. So you get wipers, mirrors, the grill intakes, all the lights are in there as well. There's proper lenses. Uh, for everything so like I say uh, we've got the sorry uh, vac form windows as well it's a high quality kit it really is I mean I've seen some really crappy ones in 44 43rd scale but that one's top quality other thing we're working on lately is my f16 Sufa. so this is the Academy uh, f16 
that's the Wolfpack carpet set in there. Um, so she's all in, all in, fits perfectly. Once you get that plug off the bottom, which is very, very close to going through, um, that absolutely just slots right in there. Uh, it's all been painted, detail painted, all the buttons picked out. A lot of work in there. Uh, sadly, you can't see a lot of it, but it's a lovely, lovely resin carpet. Very happy how that's turned out. Absolutely beautiful. And like I say, that literally just fits on now. It's a very nice fit. It actually doesn't look to be a bad kit, this, at all. Like I say, get it all glued in. It actually doesn't fit bad, because it's a resin cockpit, a little bit of clampage, very light, and in she goes. Absolutely brilliant. So that's the cockpit. Very happy with that. That's a lovely addition. 50 quid cockpit, though. Not cheap. And then we've got the Aries Bay, uh, which I primed, hence me being covered in primer. A uh, tricky one to prime because of all the different angles. And it's a miracle because for an Aries wheel bay, completely out of the box, without even touching it, it bloody fits. Would you believe that? So it's primed in black. That's uh, UMP black, ready sprayed in white. Uh, if you never spray white over black, it sprays very easily. So that's in there ready to rock and roll. We've got the rear part of the intake, which sits on top of that. It does actually fit as well, considering it's going on to a uh, resin part. Now, this is the bit I've been working on the most. I'm going to come in a little bit. Uh, a lot of work involved right there. Um, so what we've got, we've got the intakes, which I've made seamless. Um, they're the kit ones. So what did I do there? I built them up in the halves, glued them up, clamped them, a little bit of Bondo in there into the seam, sanded it as good as I could, which, you know, still left the seam. Then the old trick of plugging the back with some white tack, filling it right to the brim with UMP primer. I know a lot of people use house primer, but UMP primer worked absolutely fantastic. No issues at all. Um, let it sit for a couple of minutes, tipped it away, let it dry. I think it was three applications of that, and I got beautifully seamless intakes, which I'm very, very happy with. Uh, in there as well, we had to cut off the original... Um, Landing gear, front landing gear bay, and which is a lot of work to do. Sand it right back and then shoehorn in the Aries bit, which did need a lot of work to get in there. A lot of sanding, test fitting, etc. etc. And then the parts themselves, this part here is in half, so that's all been glued together uh, as a seam there and there. So they've been filled, glued a lot. Bit of sprue glue in there to dry. How's it doing? Yeah, not bad, we're nearly there. Uh, so probably in a couple of days we're ready to go and then the front intake lip glued in place and it actually does all fit on uh, There's a lot of work. There's a lot of hours work in just that single piece alone But I'm very happy with it. We're still going to paint the support strut there um, And probably give it another slight lick of white paint around the edge and then I'll have to mask that uh, When it comes to spray the aircraft, but a lot of work there, but really really good really enjoying that kit Plodding away at that one. So absolutely fantastic other than that, the Space Marines are on the go, but they've not really moved at all from last time. Um, and what else we got on the go? That's it, the 109, which I need to do a video of. I say it every single time, but before I know it, there's a month gone. Um, and that's it, that's everything we're working on. The bike has taken up a massive amount of time. It's seven weeks worth of work, but well worth it. Absolutely beautiful kit. So there we go, that's what I've been working on. Uh, that's about a week old, that now. Uh, there's a little bit of progress on some of the builds. Uh, and I will do a bench update in probably two, three days um, because I'll have a lot more progress to show on them. Um, but yeah, doing well. I've been busy. The Africa Trin's finished. Absolutely beautiful. Love building that thing. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, the Escort's on the go. The Porsche's on the go. Uh, got the F16 as well. So quite a lot on the go at the minute. Um, so yeah, I will we'll have a bench update in a couple of days and I'll show where I'm at. So there you go. So thanks for looking at my little bit. I'm going to take you back to Lee. Thanks for watching. Take care. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. There you go. Thanks a lot, Paul. Uh, as you can see, uh, some fantastic stuff going on there. Uh, as always, uh, Paul always gets to do the good stuff, that's for sure. Um, that, well, that's the end of the last new show uh, in its current format. Don't forget, it'll be a, a RSM update in future. And it'll go from an hour, hour and a half down to about, I would imagine, about 20, 25 minutes. <clears throat> excuse me I've got a frog in my throat at its most so uh, uh, it'd make it more bite-sized and more manageable I think and more digestible for most people as well and you'd have to get to see our ugly mugs for an hour and a half at a time 
All that remains is to say a big thank you to our sponsors, uh, eModels, who sponsor our monthly price draws and the Friday Night Light Show as well. They really do help us out. Thanks a lot, Pete and the Gav and the guys at eModels. Uh, we've got Martin at Aircraft.net who uh, sponsors all our GBs. So thank you, Martin, for that. Some fantastic prizes he gives over. And to Ultimate Modern Products ourselves, who sponsor all the SIGs now. So uh, that's it. And farewell for our last show, our last new show in its current format. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.